So we've talked about the uh, basic building blocks of lighting. We talked about ambient, diffuse, and specular. And now in this section of the DVD, we're going to throw uh, a few more little goodies into the mix. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, a few topics that are just a little bit more advanced. Um, so first of all, in this chapter, what I'd like to talk about is called light attenuation. And what that means is that the further away from an object a light source gets, the less that light source illuminates the object. And the reason for that is because the light rays coming out of the light get scattered, uh, they start to bounce around, and less of the rays from the light source reach the object. So with the shader that we've made so far, if we pick our light source and we move it away from the object, the light actually isn't changing intensity at all. If I zoom out here, move the light way back, you can see that it's staying the same uh, brightness. And that's the way that it works with the very most basic lighting model, but that's not actually the way realistic light sources work. And so we need to add some code to our shader that does light attenuation. So that's what we're going to talk about in this chapter. Uh, so let's just go ahead and jump right in here and get to it. So we're going to move down here and add a new little section called attenuation. And the first thing that we need to know is how far away from our object is our light source. And we've already got a light vector coming in. Here's our light vector. And when we normalize it, we make it a length of 1. And that's actually not what we want in this case. What we want to know is, here's our light vector, which goes from our light to the point on our model. How long is that? And there's a really easy way to figure that out. I can say d, and well, actually, I'm going to say float d. d is for distance. So the distance from my light is equal to, and I'm going to take my incoming light vector, in dot, I'm just going to copy this, actually. So my distance equals the length of this light vector. So, and actually, HLSL has a length intrinsic function built right into it. So all I have to do is type the length of this light vector. And it's going to measure that for me with its built-in function. And it'll give me that uh, in the variable d. So I've measured the length of my light vector. Well, now what do I do with it? Well, there's a couple of different formulas we can use for calculating our attenuation. And let's start off with uh, kind of the most basic one. And this is linear light decay, meaning that the light will fall off in a linear fashion as my light gets further away from, uh, from my model. So I'm going to type float attenuation equals, and then here's the uh, formula, 1 divided by d, which is the distance that I just calculated. And that's it. So basically, I'm just uh, taking my distance and dividing it by 1. Now I need to, uh, so anyway, so that, that's a pretty simple formula there, isn't it? Um, so now what I need to do is factor my attenuation into my final lighting. And my attenuation is really only going to affect my diffuse and specular terms. It's not going to affect my ambient, because the ambient is just uh, the lighting that's uh, in the air everywhere. And so I actually need to calculate diffuse plus specular separately uh, from my ambient. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new float here. I'm going to call it float for light. And I'm going to set that equal to diffuse plus specular. And then I'm going to multiply it by my light color. And I'm also going to multiply it by my attenuation. So there's my the light coming from my light source. And then here is the light coming from the ambient lighting. And then, of course, I need to add in my final light result to that. 
So can you see what I'm doing here? I've got the diffuse and the specular, and I'm multiplying by the light color so that I can change the color of my light source and influence it there. And then I'm also multiplying it by my attenuation value uh, so that the light can fall off as it gets farther away. All right, so let's save this and see what we get on our teapot. And you can see that what's happened here is that my teapot's gotten totally dark, and all that we're getting is, uh, is the ambient light. Let's move our light source in here really close and see if we can pick up any lighting on our teapot at all. Looks like no matter how close or far away from the teapot I get the light, still getting a teapot that's completely dark. Oh, look at that. When the light source gets really close, I'm getting just a little teeny bit of light. And what that means is that our attenuation is being calculated at the wrong scale. So we need to add in a multiplier here so that we can adjust uh, the value of our attenuation to account for uh, the scale of our object. And what we want to do is we could go in here and just hard code a multiplier, like I could say times 40 and save it. And what you'll see now is that I'm getting attenuation that works correctly. So as I move the light away, it gets darker and darker. See how that works? Really nice. Just move my light off, not affecting it. As it approaches, it gets brighter and brighter. So pretty cool. Um, but what I actually want to do is not hard code that, that value. I want to make this scale value something that my artists can tweak. Uh, so instead of saying 40, I'm going to make, make a new variable called decay scale. And now I have to define that variable. So I'm going to come up here in the header. And here you can see I've already defined a float variable. So I'm just going to copy the code for this one. And instead of calling it glossiness, I'm going to call it decay scale. And so now I just need to fill in the correct values. So we're going to say the minimum value that it can go to is 0. And maybe the maximum value is something like 1,000. And we're going to make the uh, step. 0 or 1, and then we'll call it, for our UI name, we'll call it light decay scale. And then for default, I kind of like how that the value of 40 was, the results the value of 40 were giving us, so I'm going to make the default of 40. Okay, so I'll save this, and now we can come over here, and I'll pick my teapot and bring up the material panel. And now what you can see is I've got this new variable here called light decay scale. And I can actually play with this. So now I've got a decay scale of 5. And you can see that's really dark. Or I can make a decay scale of 100. And it just gets really blown out. Um, but what you can see is that I can move my light off and it gets darker. And as I approach the teapot, it gets brighter. So my attenuation is working correctly. Now let's talk about a different formula for attenuation. This formula that we put in here um, is pretty simple. All we're doing is uh, 1 over the distance times the decay scale. Um, but that isn't actually how light really falls off in the real world. It doesn't fall off in a, in a linear fashion. It actually falls off in an inverse square fashion. So what we're going to do now is make a new attenuation formula. I'm just going to comment this one out. Well, actually, I'll copy it just to save us some typing. And we're going to comment this one out, and we're going to convert this one to an inverse square falloff, which is more like the behavior of real-world lighting. So when I say 1 over uh, inverse squared, you can probably guess what we're going to do here to our formula. I'm just going to come in here. And we're going to say 1 over d times d. And basically, that's just saying d squared, right? So now I'll save it. And what you'll see right away is that the light decay, uh, or the light goes away. Because when we have our inverse square fall off, 
the fall off happens a lot more quickly because what we're getting is instead of linear fall off, we're getting exponential fall off. So you'll see as I move the light source close to my object, getting just a little bit of light close up, and then as I move away, less and less light. So I need to actually come in here and adjust my uh, light scale to compensate for that. So we're going to say something like, uh, we'll go all the way up to 1,000. And what you can see is that even at 1,000, I'm still getting very little light with the light at this distance. So let's go ahead and come on up here to uh, uh, our definition for decay scale. And we'll just add a couple more zeros on here and see if we can get something that works better for us. So instead of 1,000, let's jump it up to a value of 10,000. So now our light source is super bright, but as the light moves away, it falls off much more quickly. And it gets really blown out close up. So inverse squared, which is the formula that we're using now, um, is more like the way real world light behaves, but it's a little bit harder to control. You kind of have to uh, monkey with the values a little bit, and uh, you end up losing the light as the light moves away uh, pretty quickly. So it's kind of uh, more difficult to control than the linear fall off um, that we created first. And so even though this one, uh, this inverse squared is more realistic, you might want to stick with the linear fall off uh, just because it's a little bit easier to control. So that's how light attenuation works. Pretty simple, basically just measuring the distance from the light to the point on the surface and then using that in the attenuation formula and then multiplying your light's uh, calculated color by your attenuation. Uh, so pretty simple. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about directional lights because up, up until now we've just been using uh, omni light sources, um, but we're going to talk about how to add in directional lights into your shader. That's in the next chapter.